What's the traditional way casting people got jobs? Was there ever a traditional way? <laughs> um, I like, mean, did they ever put out like an you know like an RFP type of thing for casting, or even an audition breakdown no, for casting? So, sort of what happens, and this is we talk about in one maybe a few episodes ago on Tipsy Casting that there there used to be this sort of traditional thing that when you were you had like a coming out party essentially as a casting director, you would leave your company that you were working for as a co casting director or as an associate. And um, you would go to all the studios and networks and you would take general meetings. Okay. And we would do the same thing that actors do. We sit on the couch, right. but in a corporate environment. Hi, my name is Jessica. Like yep. me, hire me. What can I do? Um, very uncomfortable. That felt a little different. <laughs> that pitch felt good. It like is. Like me, hire me. <laughs> what I can mean, I do? <laughs> that's essentially what it is because it's like, first of all, I don't thrive in a corporate environment. Right. Like even going up that elevator is very stress inducing right. for me. So you got to come with props or something. Oh, I feel like. my goodness. If that was like <laughs> allowed or, or just like a sexy confidence that you don't <laughs> care about this thing. I, you know, you try to build it over time. I think the last general I had was this is a handful of years ago now was at the CW and l the executive there that took the meeting with me literally made me cry by the end of it. How so? She like I walked in and she was like, she's not at CW anymore. I don't yeah. think anybody is. Um, but she was like, why are we meeting again? What okay. was the reason why? Okay. And I was like, I don't know. I emailed you. Like, I was like panicked already. I couldn't understand what was happening. And uh, and she, and I was like, oh, I, I emailed you. But who did you work for? She said. And I said, April Webster. She's like, oh, that's why. Oh, that's why. And then she, we sat down and we. I thought we had like a nice conversation. And by the end of it, she was like, yeah, what you're missing here is like a sexy pilot. And I was like, that's why I'm here <laughs> to, to get, get the a pilot. Sexy pilot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she and she's like, yeah, I'm, I'll keep you in mind, but I wouldn't be too hopeful. Oof. Yeah. And, and that, it was literally the last uh, general on the docket of all of the studios. Oh, networks. that's good. And I called my sister from the parking garage and I just cried. Yeah. I was like, this is horrible. Yeah. People are. It's all lip service. It's so much lip service. Right. And that's the hardest part because they try to build you up of like, oh, this is a really great meeting. We're going to keep you in mind. And then you never hear from them again yeah i mean welcome <laughs> to the life of i know <laughs> that was a revelation but that's also when i started my own company like that actually before i started my own company i whenever i would do general meetings i do not do them in the office even when i had an office yeah because it creates this uh really icky um pressure pressure and like need to perform yeah. and like it just it doesn't give you the truth true essence as much as possible of that person right so i only do coffee shops i have a coffee i've had generals you know end after an hour i've gone four hours with generals because it's like such a great time who's that person <laughs> there's a there's a short list but it does exist but i think it's like it's one of those things for me though those conversations are so telling of yeah. like getting a sense of somebody's interests and what they're like like and how they order their coffee like i think that for me is very valuable yeah. and i would never want to put stress on an actor in that space yeah because you, you hope to get to see them the most in that moment right right know? for sure yeah. so what happened in that process where you would graduate them into the generals and they would get a series of generals that just went away at some point or no i still do it but like oh, you everybody, mean this, oh, you I was mean saying the, like the casting how, side. Yeah. Uh, no. So people still do it, but I, there's nothing. You don't really reap anything from them ultimately. But they still have it. So if I'm a casting associate and I'm like, I'm going to go on my own. Yeah. The whole casting community is going to lift me up and send me on generals, basically. No, is no, how no. It works. You have to either you cold email or you have an agent oh, or a I manager. Thought you, I thought you postulated it as like the casting community oh, God, works no. together. They don't do anything for you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little too real. <laughs> no, the casting, I, I, if somebody does that, I think it's a rarity. Okay. But um, usually it's either you do the outreach yourself. And you cold email people. Yeah. Uh, probably it starts with the relationships of executives that you've worked with under the umbrella that you're in. I see. So, um, or an agent or a manager that you have strong relationships with that is going to represent you as a casting director okay. will help set up those things. But when I left casting, or when I left casting, when I left April, um, mm. was this a, that's a <laughs> Freudian, Freudian slip. slip. Yeah. <laughs> She's Let's moving to Aruba. Uh, join Jen um, no but uh, when I left April there was this idea that like there was a, a list of boxes you had to check yeah. you had to have cast uh, a pilot as a co-casting director you had to have cast a series as a co-casting director a movie like wh whatever the possibilities for casting is you had to have done that at least once okay 
that I learned after I ticked all the boxes is utter bullshit. <laughs> really? <laughs> because now nobody cares what you've done unless you have um, either a producer towing you that's got weight yeah. or um, you work for one of the high volume casting directors right. still. So when did this like, when did this shift happen though? I th- so I've been on my own for about seven years. Okay. And it feels like seven years ago is when this shifted. Really? Yeah. Because I like Sarah Isaacson used to work for April. She partnered up with Eric Soulier. They're they're not partners anymore, but like they got a show right away. So I feel like there was a moment that it just stopped. Was there an an inciting incident or something, or did it just sort of? I don't. I, maybe it was the change in the industry of like the landscape of the industry turning all streaming, and then you yeah. know these people. I don't know, but I, but like CBS was notorious for not working with any new people for a long time. Well, I think they still do that. Chuck Lorre makes like every show over there, right? <laughs> well, at least on the casting side, I know Claudia Lyons is now over there, and she's very uh, she. I, well, I would assume Chuck Lorre has the same casting for everybody, right? Maybe I probably. I would assume, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I think... Because what you just said, right? A yeah. producer picks a casting person and hangs on to him. I mean, I had a conversation with someone over there being like, is there anything... Because pre-COVID, there were all of those programs for writers and directors, like the mentorship programs or like ABC would pay for a seat at the table for uh, for a writer to get brought into, you know. Yeah. And there's there, nothing like that exists for casting. And so they just regurgitate the same casting directors over and over again. Right. And so I was talking to one of the executives over there. Is there anything that you can do to bring in the younger generation of casting directors? And it, she basically was like, not really. I mean, she was lovely. I really, she's a really nice person. But basically she said, like, we give them a list and they just pluck the biggest names from the list. Right. And that's it because nobody does homework. Right. And they they think that because they have you know, Mary Renew, that they're going to get an A-list cast for a network television show, but that's not how it works. 